Hey guys, last week the team at Amazon Prime Video published a really interesting case study. Basically, they decided to replace their serverless microservices architecture with a monolith instead. Now, this decision ended up saving them a whopping 90% on operation cost. Plus, they claim it made their systems much simpler. Now, that's a huge success. In this video, I'll first share my first-hand experience with serverless computing and microservices. Because both of these technologies involve breaking up your software application into smaller pieces or functions, which can offer several benefits. However, there are also some potential challenges as recently encountered by the Amazon Prime team that I'll be exploring as well. So let's get started. The reason for the term serverless is not because there is an absence of servers, but because the control of the servers has been abstracted away and made the responsibility of the cloud provider. Serverless technology enables companies to reduce the overhead of provisioning, scaling and in general, managing the infrastructure. So from the perspective of the developer, there is less need to worry about maintaining and scaling servers, effectively making their architecture serverless. Now the term serverless is also a bit overloaded. It represents a few different ideas and one of these ideas is FAAS or function as a service. FAAS or serverless functions are meant to be small pieces of application code that are provisioned in response to some event. Once the event fires, a container is spun up in which the function will execute. After the execution, the container will remain idle for a short amount of time in case there are any further invocations of the function. If not, the container is torn down. This facilitates scaling up and down according to demand and only paying for the resources that are used. FAAS is so prevalent in serverless architectures that it is often equated with the term serverless itself. AWS Lambdas, for example, are Amazon's FAAS offering. Lambdas are deployed on containers that support runtimes in many programming languages. Lambdas can be invoked by many AWS services, including other Lambdas. They, however, have a limited execution of 15 minutes and any state associated with the execution is then lost. Microservices, on the other hand, are a way of building software applications by breaking them up into small independent pieces. Each microservice is responsible for a specific part of the application and communicates with the other microservices using APIs. The idea behind microservices is that by breaking up an application into smaller pieces, it becomes easier to develop, test and deploy. So basically, serverless is a way of running software applications without having to worry about managing servers. Instead, you use a cloud provider like AWS to run your code for you. Microservices is a way of building software applications by breaking them into small independent services that can communicate with each other via APIs. And AWS Lambdas is a specific service provided by AWS that enables you to run serverless functions. Azure Functions and Google Cloud Functions are serverless options from other cloud providers. Microservices can, however, become complex because of the same reason of breaking up an application into smaller pieces. Because now we must ensure that they communicate with each other effectively. And this requires a lot of work to make sure the APIs are working correctly and the microservices are communicating with each other properly. Similarly, serverless computing can be complex because it involves breaking up a program into even smaller functions, which must then be orchestrated together to run as a complete program. And this can require a lot of work to make sure everything is working together correctly. The Prime Video team has been working on a tool that enables them to automatically detect quality issues such as audio video sync problems and initiate a process to resolve them. The tech team at Prime Video already owned a tool which consisted of distributed microservices using serverless components such as AWS Lambda and AWS Step Functions which is basically a serverless workflow service that enables you to coordinate and visualize your distributed microservices as a series of steps. And this was the main scaling bottleneck in their architecture. That is the coordination or orchestration management that was implemented using AWS Step Functions. For those who are not familiar to AWS Step Functions, I'll do a deep dive in my future video. But at a high level, AWS Step Functions charge users by state transitions. And if performed multiple state transitions every second, it increases their overall expenses. And it performed multiple state transitions every second, increasing their overall expenses. The second issue is the way they were passing video frames, which are basically images around different components. Typically, when we specially deal with raw data such as files or videos or images, it's a common pattern to temporarily store or stage your data in Amazon S3 
so that the next stage or microservice can download. But this caused high number of expensive calls to S3. So what did they do? They moved from distributed microservices back to monolith applications. They packed all of the components into single process and this eliminated the need for the S3 bucket as the intermediate storage for video frames because the data transfer now happened in memory. Not only that, their high level architecture remained the same and they still had exactly the same components as it was in the initial design. Now, if you already have been following my videos, you already know that one of the primary drawbacks of a monolith application is that it can only scale vertically because they all run within the same instance. Vertical scaling is limited and the Amazon team, they soon exceeded the capacity of a single instance. This scaling problem was solved by creating multiple clones of the service and a lightweight orchestration layer to distribute customer requests. By doing this, they not only reduced their infrastructure cost by over 90%, it also increased their scaling capabilities and simplified the architecture. In fact, the creator of Ruby on Rails and Basecamp has been advocating for majestic monoliths for the last decade and took his entire company off the cloud and now they just run their own servers. In fact, a lot of successful startups like Dropbox have ended up leaving the cloud once they get big enough. Now, if you are thinking that you should also group your microservices all together into a monolith, it depends. Because in case of Amazon Prime, the optimization was pretty obvious. Back in 2008, Netflix was based on a monolith architecture and had a massive failure that motivated them to break their architecture into hundreds of different microservices that can scale independently with fault tolerance. Now, this might be more complex and expensive, but if Netflix goes down for a few hours, it will cost them way more money. Even for small businesses, employing serverless technology can significantly accelerate the pace of the project delivery. And this was rightly mentioned in the AWS blog takeaway. Microservices and serverless components are tools that do work at high scale, but whether to use them over monolith has to be made on a case-by-case -case basis.